Hello, this is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date, January the 30th, 2019, and what a great day. Vegas, I'm going to hand it right wow. over to you. Wow, what a really good day, actually. Um, so many things to talk about, but I want to talk about um, how the Dow Jones jumped 400 points because the feds kept the rates unchanged. I'll talk about that in a minute. We're also going to talk about AMD. We're going to talk about Facebook. We're going to talk about NBEV. We're going to talk about NIO. And you know what? I think I might even throw a bonus swing trade idea. So uh, first one is I want to talk about the Dow Jones. So, you know, the stocks gained some momentum after the Federal Reserve officials announced that they would keep the benchmark interest rates unchanged. And that, you know, signaled some flexibility in their policy normalization path forward so you know the s p was up 1.5 percent or which you know convert that into 41.05 points as of the market close the dow also advanced to 1.77 percent having been up about 250 points ahead of the release of the federal reserve's latest policy statement which came out around two o'clock uh, earlier today eastern standard time so, you know, they did mention that they're going to pause the interest rate hikes and holding the target range of its benchmark interest at the current band of 2.25 to 2.5% following their January meeting. And this outcome, just so you know, was widely anticipated and expected by the market participants. I mean, Jim was saying it the whole time. He doesn't think they'll raise it. And you know what? He was right. So, you know, people were watching closely for more clarity surrounding the Fed's recent rhetoric of being patient with monetary policy uh, amid waiting economic data and concerns of a global slowdown. Uh, but in light of global economic and financial developments and inflation pressures, uh, the committee will be patient and determine if there's any future ad adjustments, obviously, that will happen with the target for the federal funds rate may be appropriate to support these outcomes. So. Anyhow, we'll see what that hap what happens. Uh, so that was good news. And um, on now over to uh, the first pick, which is AMG. Oh, my. God. The, this should be called OMG, but this is AMD. You guys know I'm a really big fan of advanced micro devices. And they're kind of like, you know, NVIDIA's little, little baby. NVIDIA has how I like to view this company. They had their best day in three years after they've uh, had their earnings yesterday they announced a strong full year outlook and uh, much of it was coming into the second half of the year the shares surged 20 percent to the close of about close to over 23 dollars i was predicting about 23 dollars today actually and uh, oh my goodness, I was so excited for Jim because I've been pushing him, as you guys know, to get into options. And he bought an options trade yesterday for the $20 calls. And uh, him and I touched base last night about AMD. And I told him that um, it's going to be, you know, going about probably $23 tomorrow. And he's like, okay, I'll be watching this stock. And uh, he's obviously going to sell his option. And my goodness, he did very well on it, but a lot of people uh, held on throughout the day and did very well. I mean, I it went from like $99 investment uh, all the way to $315 on a $99 investment. So $215 profit. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So excited. And I'm going to let Jim talk about AMD chart, and I want him to share... If you don't mind, Jim, your options experience because, you know, it's your first time and the fact that, you know, you didn't really put in a lot of money. So I want to be able to, for you to inspire people with a little bit of money to try and grow an account with options. Yeah, I mean, I've been wanting to, I've been kind of strictly on myself about wanting to do it and I've been trading for a while and I can really read the charts and stuff and. Finally, at the first of the year, I convinced myself that I'm ready to go ahead and dove into this. And I opened up a Tastyworks account, and I started a $500 challenge in options. And yesterday, Vegas suggested that maybe we get in that AMD, which we've been watching from about $10 all the way up to $20, and we ran it up to $30 one time. 
And so I bought me a, a, a 97, cost me $97. It was a $20 strike. And then after hours, it ran up. So I knew when I woke up this morning that I'd probably get in a profit. And I made 138%. I invested $97 and, and I made $138 out of the trade. So I'm going to give my kudos to Vegas for finally getting me in it. And we're really going to become a great options team, her and I, and, and the room. I can see it coming all the way. And I bought me some Bank of America calls today for 30 so we're going to see how that goes. And I'll probably scalp them. I don't think I have the patience yet, yet to hold them long. But I think I got them for February the 15th. And so I'm still going to have a lot of time to get in and out of that trade. And that's basically what it is. And then we're going to go ahead and show you the chart on AMD. Let me get this chart up. Hide a few things here. AMD after hours right now is at twenty three fourteen. Vegas called twenty three dollars today. It hovered around that twenty eight area for quite a while today, but here we are. When we got in it right before the market closed, I bought into this thing around nineteen. I think around nineteen fifty or somewhere around there. And after hours, it boomed up, hit that twenty one thirty eight. So when I got in first thing this morning, I went ahead and sold it right off the bat. Sold it at about a 20, I think it was right around 2230 something, 2238, somewhere around there, 2230. And then she dipped on down, now it started a little trend line, and we bounced off that trend line a little bit, and then we went diagonally all day long right around that 2233, and then right into close we had that bounce, and then it hovered around 85, 2285, and then here after hours we had a high, I hit my 2236 target that I had. For a trend line, that's where that trend line was right here. You see how I drew that diagonal line up through there? And I said, told the room, I said, we're going to probably close right around this area right here, right around 2236. And we went to 2238. It is below the trend line right now. So basically, we run off that 50 SMA after hours. And here we are at 2317. And this is a stock we called back, oh, let me pull up. That's. I think that's the. Let me pull up three months. There we go. Called this thing right around ten dollars. Well, that's not even it either. So I pull up a year. You have to excuse me. I got a little excited trading this thing today. We called this stock down here at nine bucks, and we were really talking real strong about it right around ten, and that thing ran all the way up to thirty-four dollars. I wouldn't be surprised if we hit that $30 again sometime this year pretty easy because this stock's really amazing. This stock ran for the low, I think around $2 or something, and that's what we got right here, thirty-four fourteen high. So that's AMD. Keep your good eye on it. And Vegas, thank you again. You're Next. welcome. Glad that worked out. I mean, you know, there's nothing like more exciting than doing your first option trade and actually making money on it. So yep. congratulations, Jim. That was a great, great profit on a small investment. So congratulations. Yep. I'm Yepers. very happy. Okay. So, and I got him to buy a few different ones today. So uh, if you're in our chat, you'll know I'm talking about options a lot, um, especially because, you know, I'm really focused on helping people with small accounts. Okay. So next one that I want to talk about is Facebook. Who seriously was expecting Facebook to actually soar and crush earnings? I think many people thought with all the bad press that they've been having with privacy that uh, they certainly would not uh, be uh, exceeding their earnings. But you know what? They crushed analyst estimates at $7.37, which is a 21% increase from last quarter and a 19% increase from last year. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg has been mentioning, he's been drilling down on the company's stories features. Um, the revenue for the December was 16.91 billion, which marks a year over year growth. This is insane, but a growth of 30.4%. That is just absolutely crazy, crazy money. 
that Facebook is making. And no thanks to people that have Facebook accounts. Because if there were no users on Facebook, I mean, you know, they're making all their money from those uh, revenue ads that they post on um, on their platform. So, uh, you know, daily active users and monthly active users matched expectations. Actually, they jumped 1.8% quarter over quarter and, um, you know, 8.6% year over year. So it has um, the increase represented slower growth in the recent from the recent years. But it still shows that the company's scandals and public privacy disclosures, honestly, haven't really dinged engagement too drastically. I don't think people care. I mean, most people that actually probably do care, um, they're going to cancel their Facebook account. I actually know many people that canceled it or they don't have one, and that's fine. But the majority are still engaged in Facebook, and uh, they're not going to disengage just because of what was in the news about privacy and all the sc data scandals. So congrats to Facebook, especially people that trade the stock or in our case, I look at an options call. So, you know, Facebook's a little expensive uh, from a stock perspective to really make any money. Uh, so I was really looking from an options perspective. So I figured, you know what, let's look at an options call going into earnings today after hours. This option call expires tomorrow, but the call that was purchased was the 157.50 strike price call, and it was a dollar and twenty cents for the contract, which is a hundred and twenty dollar investment. Uh, Facebook's trading right now at 162.14 uh, as I'm speaking, and we'll see what it trades at tomorrow. But that option should be worth a lot more than the hundred and twenty dollars that I invested. I only bought one. Uh, because I'm not such a big risk taker with options. Um, and we'll see, I'll let you guys know tomorrow what I sold it for. And uh, I'm excited to see where it goes tomorrow. So the fact that it's up almost $5 from my buy, uh, we'll see what that really is worth tomorrow in the market. So over to Jim now on Facebook and the chart. Oh, yeah. Well, now that we know these earnings have really run up, I expect this to go a little bit higher. Not a little bit, but a lot more. And I'll show you why I say that. we got a yearly daily right here. The yearly daily showed us mid-year last year at $218. Then we had that big gap down during the controversy with, you know, him going to court and having to testify and do all that stuff. Um, so this thing is, has just had a downward wedge downward wedge for about six months and hit bottom there right there about 123.02 so then here we run up to this this is a yearly daily chart and then now we're rubbing up here to this what I would call a uh, 100 SMA so I'm going to pull up the 20 day now and I'm telling you this thing can run up to about at least back up here to the pivot point pivot point on the stock was at 155 and we broke past that after hours so let me take it up here and we run up to 164.14 next resistance I have is at 165 I'm gonna pull up three month daily and I've got different resistances that can go up here so I've got the 176.97 that's another 10 bucks another $14 to go up so we gotta break this little resistance and let me pull this up on the daily. It'll probably pull back if it pulls back any to about 160 is what I'm thinking. But this is very bullish. We could pull back maybe to this 100. But that would be a low, 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 low support at 157.87. And I'm going to pull up the 20-day. Just get another glance at it. I'm trying to figure out where I can find the next resistances so we're at 162 we'll pull up three month and that's right about right in here is where we are right now after hours so we got we can bring this I say all the way up to 176 is going to be my target for right now 176 79 with a low support at where we where we uh, before the breakout came and that's going to be right here. 
at 151 and I don't think we're going to get down that far. There's just no way. Not with these earnings beat like this. So the momentum's picked up. And this is Facebook and I'm very happy for Vegas. She made a good chunk on that today after hours. Now hopefully it stays up here for tomorrow morning. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. I'm so excited because like I said, um, I've never really spent big money on options. And I mean, $120 is maybe not big money, but when you're not, you know, um, options expert, and I'm no way near that, um, you know, it's just having confidence in the earnings and the chart. And I really liked what I was seeing with the money flow coming in on the uh, options uh, scan. So I was looking to anticipate uh, earnings, but certainly wasn't anticipating this nope. uh, nice uh, jump. So uh, I'll let you know tomorrow. So stay tuned for what I sell that for tomorrow. Okay. So Nio. The next, Nio. Oh my gosh. Can I just tell you? So Nio. Okay. So two things. First of all, with Nio, let me just tell you guys. So a lot of people uh, yesterday, including me, uh, you know, thought that, you know, Nio was having like an offering and, you know, people just dumped the stock yesterday, including me, by the way. Um, took some losses on NIO and, you know, they actually were launching a $650 million five-year convertible bond, which is basically using the proceeds to fund an expansion. And I actually like when that's what the money is going to be used for. Um, you know, pretty much what they do, it's almost like having a bond. It's an equity linked bond. And, um, what happens is, uh, they can then sell it for cash or stocks. And, um, you know, the reason they do this is it's cheaper than to a uh, cheaper funding avenue. And uh, it allows for uh, an exchange for giving the bondholder the option of converting the debt into company shares at a set price in the future. So I kind of really like that. And uh, we'll see what happens. But so what ended up happening actually is uh, Louis, the NIO's uh, CFO, told investors on the call that part of the reason for selling the convertible bond was really to make up the difference between what the company raised during its IPO and what they thought they would need to raise. They raised a billion dollars, one billion in their US IPO, but it had earlier aimed for 1.8 to 2 billion. So, you know, the timing about the convertible bond market was receptive to a deal and he didn't really want to wait until March or April and risk a possible worsening in the US China trade tensions. You know what? I got to tell you, that's a smart CFO, okay? Um, and convertible bonds are booming in Asia, hitting their highest volumes last year since the financial crisis with $35.5 billion raised. And this is according to Refinitiv data. So, um, you know, I think this is really good news, actually, not bad news. And that, again, is just my opinion. Uh, you have to remember that uh, internet giant Tencent Holdings and Hill House Capital Group are Nile's existing backers, and they will be buying $30 million and $10 million of the convertible bonds, respectively, which is according to another source uh, that's been uh, by the Reuters report. So uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, definitely, I will say, Nio had a beautiful move today. And I was like, oh, my God, why did I sell my shares? But you know what? I actually misread the news because I didn't really read it properly and i was in a rush and i just thought you know what i'm just gonna sell it now just so you know when i sold my shares it hadn't pulled back i sold them at 694 and this was after this is before this the news yesterday came out then this news came out and the stock pulled back i think it went as low as like 660 or 650s and at the time i was like oh my gosh i didn't even know this news was coming i'm so glad i sold but let me tell you i was not happy this morning and you know what? Nile is on a really good, uh, nice little track here. So, you know what? As traders, sometimes you, you make mistakes. you got to admit it. I mean, I'm admitting it. So, uh, you know, I'm uh, impatient sometimes. I'm usually very patient. But I actually got very impatient with Nile. And you know what? That costed me money. But lesson learned. So, Jim, over to you on Nile because that was a great trade today for the day traders and uh, people on option land were happy too. So can you tell us about Niall, please? Yeah, Niall, and I understand where she's coming from because she's been in this thing for a long time, and it just hasn't oh, moved. Yeah. And then it did sell off after hours. 
And so basically we called this triple bottom down here at 592. I called it out and we run up to what I call a pivot point or a resistance level. And it just didn't want to break that resistance level for, for a couple of months. And I'm going to pull up the uh, three month. You set 92 and it bounced up, pulled back, and it bounced up to about 680, pulled back. And then today it had the big breakout from where she got out at and it pumped up to about 50 cents from, from that spot. So you're getting up here again at resistance levels. And I and this stock just kind of loves to pull back a little bit and bounce back up. But we had a three-month high up here right around 807. And I got in this thing at 10 bucks. So, you know, it, it hasn't really performed well at all, but I sold it. I didn't take much of a loss, and I just waited for this pullback right here, this five-day pullback. And then I called that triple bottom right down there at 592. And ever since then, it's kind of picked up the mustard, pulled back again to 6 bucks, and then it ran on up to that resistance level at $7. And I've been calling this $7 forever. And then it pulled back again to that 660, which I had as a good solid pivot point in this channel right here. And so I'm going to pull up the day's chart, and you can just see the little bit of act. Well, first I'll pull up the 15 minute. You can see the action, how it pulled back after hours, and then and here we go. We bounced right up back up to that, that 594 at 694 area, 699, and then it pulled back again this morning at 672. So Miss Vegas did have an opportunity to get back in it if she if she liked, but there was so much going on today, and she was doing very well. So she just she she probably made up for it today with her trading, and then it bounced on back up here to 753 today, and then pulled back. So if this thing pulls back, I'm gonna be looking at the 50 maybe, and we'll look at that right now on the daily one minute. We kind of snuggled up, con consolidated in this area. And right now it pulled back to 740. So still, she, yeah, she she might be able to still have a chance to get back in here at that 690 area that she was talking about earlier. Because this the stock is kind of funny and it does pull back. But it did break out of that resistance, you know. And I had these trend lines already on here, so we kind of popped up to that 755. And that seven dollars what needed to break, and that's what it did today. So I'm thinking she's going to have another chance to get back in it, not lose no money on it, and get a second wind on it. But it, it is looking interesting. It sounds like it's going to beat Tesla's earnings so far. So that, that was in the news, too. So Tesla's a little worried about that. We, we got, we're long on this stock. There's no doubt. We do love the action on it. And that's Nile. And then we got an old oh, Vegas. You, you remember InBev? Absolutely. I mean, Enbev, we've been on, like, honestly, I've been bullish. We've been bullish on Enbev for the long time, long time. Yep. And I got to tell you, I mean, you know, Jim and I talk all the time. And, uh, you know, one of the things I talked to him about at one time regarding Enbev was about this uh, collaboration that they were doing with um, Noni Juice. And Noni Juice is owned by the Marinda Company which is morinda.com. I don't know if Jim has a chance to show you that website. Um, but they actually were bought by Enbev. And um, they announced news today of a global expansion of what they call the Noni and Collagen Beverage following record sales in initial markets. So what is this all about? I mean, the Noni... Uh, group, just so you know, I want to take you back in time for a little bit. Noni juice, I actually know this juice when, um, you know, 20 years ago, believe it or not, I used to work at the bank and this lady um, mentioned to me about this Noni juice and uh, she asked me, you know, you're so good with, you know, explaining things to people, you should sell this juice. <laughs> I was like, what are you asking me to sell? Anyways, long and short, I heard about the Tahitian Noni juice. I even went to a conference to learn about this juice. And I was floored by this juice because of it's a natural Tahitian Noni grapes and the antioxidants in there. It's natural fruit. It helps to stimulate um, 
your skin. There was people that had like um, psoriasis where they actually took a tablespoon of the juice and actually put it on their skin. Like they rubbed the juice into their skin, like one tablespoon every day. They rubbed it into their skin and they would leave it on for two, three hours. And then they would you know, eventually rinse it off. But can I just tell you, the psoriasis disappeared. Um, people's uh, joint, one lady told me she had joint pain. She was taking this juice, uh, two tablespoons a day. That's all she took. And she told me after two weeks, the joint pain disappeared. So I was like sold on that. I was like, oh my gosh, I got to get this juice. And you know what? It just wasn't my thing back then. I was like not into it. And you know what? I didn't really, you know, become this major salesperson on Noni Juice. But, you know, amazing now, fast forward, how Anbev, uh, is uh, took over the company and uh, they now have a Noni collagen product. And what they're doing is they are offering the brand in 50 ml glass bottle shots. It's used as a once daily use and it's sold in three 10 packs for a 30 day supply. So what will happen is your skin uh, will obviously has natural uh, elasticity, but um, it's built with the Noni Juice Foundation, this product, and apparently the launch has been so successful. So um, they're going to, it's going to be a huge, significant role in the beverage landscape of 2019, and um, it's going to be an all-time high, uh, big interest on the market, so people will be able to use this new product so i'm interested to see how they're gonna how this product's gonna be marketed um but yeah it's gonna be basically 50 ml glass bottle shots so i guess you'll have to drink it so it's not a, i don't think it's obviously not a cream because they're calling it a noni collagen product and noni is a beverage and this is enbev so it's not a skin cream so this is going to be really interesting and uh, i look forward to you know what i think i might even try it out so when this becomes available on the market, I am going to be looking to try this out because I love the Noni juice in general. Uh, that's done wonders for people's skin. Uh, but I want to see how they're going to manufacture this in the juice. And it's going to become the Noni collagen juice. This is going to be amazing, Jim. Yep. So over I think this is exciting. And Bev, to me, down the road, I won't be shocked one day this stock's going to be in the $10 plus. So over to you, Jim. Yeah, I brought in for the first two months, this Noni Juice brought in $4 million in revenue for its initial test markets. Wow. $4 million in revenue. And that's just two months. And that was marketed in, a, let's see, it's a Colorado-based company, and it was marketed in Japan, Taiwan, and now the U.S. So 50 additional countries, Europe, Latin America, they're all going to get some of this stuff. So I'm going to talk about InBev chart. We've been very bullish on this for more than a half a year. And I'm going to pull up the year daily. We noticed the breakout on this thing back here. And we were in this thing up and down for quite a while. And then all of a sudden we had this big, huge breakout up to 10 bucks. So we did hit that $10 target, just $9.99. And it pulled back to a resistance level about $8.91. So what we need to kind of do, and, and I'm going to get rid of these two trend lines here, because that was a pattern I was playing a while back. Let me see here, remove drawing, channel one, there we go. So we got a trend right here, and I'm going to draw this up on the year's chart. From right about here all the way up to, it can exceed on out to really solid support level. And I'm going to draw that up. So we're going to pull this up to 20 day. Every chart tells a story. Every chart tells a story. And you can see I've got all kinds of scribbles on this. All kinds of yellow lines. And I've just been playing the heck out of it. Well, I had a low support down here at 6 bucks, And that's been my solid support. And we never have touched that. It never has come back and touched that. So... It's ran up, it hit my little resistance at 655, and then past five days we had another breakout, pulled back to that 50 right there, and ran on up to this 740, and here we are after hours again, pulled back to seven bucks. This stock is just wonderful to play on pullbacks. It, I'm 100% bullish on it. We're gonna pull up the daily and look at it real fast. 
you see how we had a high here and it pulled back to my 674 support level then we had that that pull back again today at that 674 level and right out i mean right out of the gate it broke up and pulled back and i like to wait that first 15 minutes unless i'm really in a momentum stock but this first 15 minutes of the day i usually make pretty good money because i'll get in on a dip it seems like a lot of stocks will dip after that initial breakout pull back and then it ran all the way up to that 740 we had a double top we need to break here right at 744 need to change this trend line so i'm saying right around 774 and then we had to pull back mostly for the rest of the day so i wouldn't be surprised if this thing bounces back up pre-market and then pulls back a little bit maybe finding another resistance support level at this seven dollars if you can get, I mean, we're at 702 right now, so 697 somewhere around there, and I expect this to go ahead and keep on running, probably for the next month or so, back up to that 990, and we're going to probably have some more breakouts because this constantly gets news, and I'm going to show you just one thing about this stock that I like a lot about the company, and that's the products, the brands that they have. I mean, they just got a they just really growing real fast. They're excelling. They got the Marley drinks. They got just a ton of drinks also that will be coming your way in markets close to you. And it just keeps going on and on and on and on. And then they added that new one today. So this is InBev. I'm 100% bullish on it. Play the support levels. Don't rush into the trade because this is a stock that you can definitely pay the pullbacks on and scalp. And also hold long. So if you don't have a core position, you might as want might want to grab one on a good support level. And that's InBev. Then we got the special bonus. Yeah, I just want to say while you're talking, I yep. can't believe the action on Facebook's just crazy. Yep. Absolutely crazy. It went as high as one sixty eight ninety. This is a crazy, crazy it's stock. It's going to go yeah. up because it, it, the earnings oh, really pushed this stock up. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So this is ex – I'm excited for tomorrow. <laughs> but we'll see tomorrow. This will be the, my first probably really good options trade. Well, I would um, say 180, 170. I mean, this thing can go a lot higher. Oh, my goodness. Okay. We'll see tomorrow. Um, okay. So the surprise or the um, – uh, bonus that I like to share with you guys um, is a ticker called PYDS and it stands for Payment Data Systems. And the reason I actually like this particular stock is that um, they did announce not too long ago, actually yesterday or a couple days ago, that their um, record transactions for processing uh, year end was a record volume up of 19%, all time record of $3.4 billion. Okay. This company's in Texas, by the way. They are an integrated electronic payment solutions provider. And, uh, you know, obviously they process uh, credit card transactions. And um, you can take a look at their website if it interests you. But it's, you know, you can check it out called Payment Data dot com uh you can send money with your um, you know with uh, your credit card they got all kinds of little tools that you can download to your phone uh it's almost i'm gonna have to research the stock a little more only because it kind of reminds me a little bit like almost like a little paypal and um this is kind of where customers use it where and and however they want to pay you or be paid so this is interesting. I'll have to research a little more from a consumer perspective because usually I think from the consumer perspective, you can have what it's works with Apple Pay, first of all, and they also have like what they call, uh, I guess, like a the MasterCard debit that you can have. And um, I guess they can you can use that card uh, and, you know, to obviously manage expenses and use it for bills and like a like a typical debit card. So anyhow, I'm going to research more. I'll talk more about it another day. But I did like it because of that information that they had record volume, all-time record of $3.4 billion. Um, it seems to me that this company, the stock's in great shape. New 52-week high. Love the setup. 
very attractive chart and I'm looking for a continuation on the stock. And Jim, what are your thoughts on this? Because you were helpful with me this morning when we were looking at the chart together. Yep. Said, told you that we had a 52, uh, the 52 week breakout. And this is a three and I'm, let me see here. It's a three month. I need to pull up the three year weekly. So this has got a lot more room to go. We had to get up to this resistance level here at 263, and that's why we hit. We had a day high of right around 266. Then it pulled back to 250. And we've got still some more room on a three years chart to bring it up. So I brought it up to about 287. Then we got a big gap to fill beyond that, and that's around 237. And yeah, 237, two, okay, 340, and 345. Then we've got some wicks we got to fill up too, and it had a high, three year high of 410. So I'm going to pull up the 20 day real fast and show you the pattern that it's in. We've had a pretty good upward pattern on a 20 day. Down these old red trend lines are from last year. So we busted past that old red trend line area, and then we went into the 52 week high right here which is at 234 340 240 and we ran all the way up to a day high of 265 next resistance on this baby is right around 277 and i always tell everybody don't chase the stock let it try to find an entry on a pullback if you can and support level on this right now is going to be not too far down around 253 then the next one's right around 246 so this is one to keep on watch. This is PYDS, and I like I like the idea too that it's record breaking. Um, people are getting involved in this company, and we'll just mm -hmm. see how she does tomorrow. But she yeah, did break well, out of that fifty-two week high. Absolutely, and you know what? I was just also reading one other little company is that they did post. Okay, this is from Louis Hosh, the president and CEO of the company. He did say the other day. They're thrilled. They have achieved the highest quarterly, and this is key, okay? This is why I, li I like to read articles when I actually study them. It's the highest, not only the quarterly, but the highest annual level of total transactions processing volume since the company's inception. This is massive. Record annual revenues for 2018, and they also had... Um, uh, a lot of acquisitions where they've acquired and generated new business partners that are joining what they call payback business. And they've added eight new partners recently. So I think the revenues are just going to keep going. Uh, not to say the stock's going to run forever because everything pulls back. But uh, this is an interesting one. So keep this on watch, like Jim said. Uh, have it as an active swing trade currently. And uh, we'll see where it goes in the next couple of days. So yeah, thanks a lot, Jim, for that. I think the low support on this is going to be right around 234. So that, that was a previous high that we hit. And a lot of times when I see these things, I'll say the low, low support. We don't want it to go no lower than 234. Okay. So I would be comfortable with the stop loss there. Yeah. You know, 234, 233 max. And that's it. If yep. you hit that, done. Out of the trade. All right. Well. Uh, I also want to make sure that everybody subscribes to the channel and they hit that bell. You hit that bell and you'll get our future updates. And if there's any people that like the video, please give your comments. And we'd like to hear from the ones that dislike it. Yeah. See what they got to yeah, say. Yeah, I mean, if you don't, then we tell can us improve. what you don't We like. can make an improvement. Yeah, we're always happy to listen to your feedback. And uh, again, at the, at the end of the day, the information is to help everyone. So thank you, everyone, for your... Uh, time to listen to us talk and hopefully you're making money with some of the uh, information that we share and if you are we'd love to hear that so thanks again have an amazing night and we'll speak to you on sunday because uh tomorrow is oh it's tomorrow what day is it tomorrow my god i'm losing my mind tomorrow's thursday tomorrow, tomorrow oh yeah we'll probably speak to you tomorrow <laughs> tomorrow uh, i thought today was thursday for some reason i'm a little ahead of myself Okay, we'll you always see are. you guys tomorrow. Yep, always got to be ahead, 10 steps. Okay, guys, have a good night. And uh, ladies, have a great evening. And um, we will uh, connect with you everyone tomorrow. Good night for now, and I love stocks. And now you know what? 
I love options too. And congratulations to the room today for following us in our options calls. And, and we have some pretty good options people in there that are just getting better day by day. And we, we just want to give you all kudos too. So this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim, January the 30th, 2019. And this year is going to be a real good year because last year wasn't so hot. But when the market's red, we like to stay green. I love stocks.